This is the Squint Gaming, and you're watching Squintorials. Three, two, one. Everybody and welcome back to another Squint Gaming Squintorials video. Today I'm going to be covering the basics of Streamlabs. Streamlabs is a method of or a software that people use to stream. Most people know that. Uh, not a new thing, not new information. However, a lot of people that are just getting into streaming uh, don't really know the different types of software that they can use to stream with. Um, and when they do find a certain one, especially when it's free, a lot of people like free, right? Uh, nobody likes to have to pay for stuff, especially when you're just starting out, you're not monetized. Uh, you're not getting any income stream from it. So, you know, if you don't have the money necessarily to put into being a YouTuber or, a, you know, a, a content creator on any of the platforms, you're looking for something that's going to benefit you in a means of being able to get your content out there so that you can build and become monetized. But how do you do that if you don't have a lot of money? Well, you have the option for various streaming platforms. You have OBS, you have Prism, you have uh, a few different others. Uh, Twitch itself you can use uh, without having to use any other type of streaming platform. However, today I'm going to be covering Streamlabs, okay? Uh, Streamlabs, Streamlabs OBS, as uh, it's referred to commonly, um, they, they are the same company. However, um, OBS is more of a... Um, I guess a lighter use version um, of a streaming platform compared to Streamlabs. Streamlabs is a heavier uh, software to use. Uh, it, it uses a lot more resources on your computer. So for those of you that don't have a uh, mid to higher end computer, uh, Streamlabs may not work properly for you. Uh, it may cause some lagging. It may even also cause uh, some errors uh, with your recording or your live streams, okay? Um, now, when I say your computer needs to be, you know, medium to high end, I'm more res uh, discussing the aspect of your RAM, okay? Uh, your RAM are your biggest resource uh, or your, your biggest provider of your resources for your computer, okay? Um, with your RAM, if you are only running about 16 gigs of RAM, uh, you are probably going to struggle, or I should say Streamlabs is probably going to struggle on your computer, especially if you are streaming uh, other things in addition to not just running Streamlabs, okay? Commonly, Streamlabs can run by itself anywhere from 15 to 20 gigs just by itself, okay? Um, so if you're at 16 gigs, your system is going to be really bogged down and it's probably going to crash. Okay. Uh, even running at 32 gigs, uh, you might run into some issues. It might be a little slow. I did run, uh, stream labs with 32 gigs. However, I was noticing that I was having some issues, uh, when I was doing streaming, uh, of games. Okay. So I ended up upgrading my RAM to 96 gigs uh, only because I do have some other games and stuff that I stream that are pretty resource heavy, okay, in addition to Streamlabs. Um, so giving you this information now so you can better plan, okay? Uh, you do have other options, uh, like I said, OBS uh, specifically, which is separate from Streamlabs, uh, set up basically the same way. Uh, you just don't have as much of the functionality of in OBS that you do in Streamlabs, okay? Uh, and then another one you have is um, Prism, okay? Um, I, I have downloaded Prism. I never really set it up, uh, never fully got into it. I ended up going with Streamlabs, and I love Streamlabs, okay? I, I'm not gonna downplay or talk bad about Streamlabs at all. I, I love using Streamlabs. All I wanna know, or all I want everybody to know is that it is a resource-heavy platform, okay? So uh, we are going to cover today uh, an overview of Streamlabs. We're going to go, I'm going to show you the online uh, dashboard, so to speak. Uh, and then we will get into uh, downloading the desktop, uh, Streamlabs desktop, and getting that kind of set up um, and just some of the inner workings of getting a, a set, a scene set up with what you need in order to do a basic stream. Okay. 
I will also be doing another video um, after this that uh, will get more into detail about how to set up overlays, how to set up uh, different aspects within your stream, like your cloud bot and your alerts, um, timers, all that kind of stuff for your chat. Okay, so that will be in a later video. Um, but yes, we are going to uh, run through just kind of the basics for Streamlabs in this video and then come back and check out my next video if you want to learn more about getting kind of more in-depth into building up your streams uh, to provide more, you know, interaction and stuff with your users and your followers, okay? All right, so we are going to go ahead and switch over here to our uh, online portion. Okay, so here you can see we have uh, streamlabs.com, all right? This is uh, the, the main screen, the main web page for Streamlabs. All right, so if you do not already have an account, uh, simply go in to Streamlabs. Uh, we'll just go ahead and click on Dashboard. Uh, for me, it might automatically log into mine. Uh, but if you don't have an account, you should see where it'll tell you, ask you if you want to you know, sign up or whatever. Um, create an account, and then once you create an account, uh, you will log in and you'll be uh, seeing this page. This is your main dashboard, uh, which opens up with your analytics, okay? Now, really quick, I'm just gonna kind of run through the online portion so that we can get to the desktop portion of this video, okay? Uh, so along the side here, you can see you have um, all these different uh, links to go to. Um, now, when you do stream or when you are creating uh, your streams, prepping your streams to you know go live or record videos, uh, you will use a combination of both your desktop, uh, Streamlabs desktop and your online portal, okay? The online portal or the dashboard, is where you'll go to do some of the additional stuff um, like adding in your uh, chat, your cloud bot, and you know the, the things that you see in the chat that pop up randomly uh, when people link like their store or uh, a way to tip, so on and so forth. Um, and I'll, I will also cover the uh, tipping aspect and the monetization um, stuff in the other video, okay? Uh, but I just wanna run through this really quick. Uh, so here you can see we have analytics, uh, this kind of just gives you like an overview of your past streaming uh, for the day. Um, I haven't streamed at all today, so I don't have anything listed here, okay? Uh, you can see I have right here some of my previous videos um, from within the last uh, 20 days, 25 days, okay? Uh, all right, and then recent events. Recent events basically just kind of gives you a synopsis of uh, any subscribers. Um, if you are to the point where you are monetized and you can have memberships um, it'll show your new members any types of donations that you get you know all that kind of stuff so it's just a quick snapshot overview you have your tools up top you can filter out so on and so forth you can take a look at that uh, on your own giveaways uh, any giveaways that you want to do you can set up giveaways in here um, and you actually have uh, another way to do that as well but this will show you you know any recent giveaways that you've had um, and then just other some some other settings. I'm not going to get too into the weeds in these. Uh, a lot of those are there. The pre settings are are plenty to to deal with. So um, and then general actions you can start those. I haven't messed with any of those. Um, I would probably say save that for when you're a little bit more in depth into uh, understanding how to use Streamlabs. Okay. All right, and then all stars, I'll cover this real quick. So basically, while you're setting everything up and running through using, utilizing Streamlabs in general, you earn points, okay? So right here, you can see it's an hour stream. You gain two points for every hour that you stream Streamlabs on to Streamlabs desktop. Uh, if you are currently um, streaming onto Twitch, uh, you get extra bonus points there. And if you are an Ultra member, which I will get into here momentarily, uh, you will also get uh, additional points and increased um, rank as you are the longer you're subscribed, okay? So and then over here, you have some tasks that will show you how you can earn points. Enable CloudBot, enable Merch, uh, install Streamlabs Desktop. So there you go, free points, 30 points just for downloading Streamlabs Desktop, okay? Uh, enabling multi-stream. Multi-stream is streaming on multiple platforms. So if you're on YouTube and Twitch streaming at the same time, that is your multi-stream, okay? Uh, and then enable tipping. So there you go, uh, pretty self-explanatory. And then up top here, uh, this just shows you your progress bar, okay? So you'll start off down here, 
uh, at the 1x giveaway entries, and you just get all of these things uh, along the way that will unlock uh, for you, okay, uh, as you get up higher and higher. So currently I am uh, in the Onyx, and I'm working towards the custom branded graphics. Uh, I'm not sure if that's a discount, if it's a free one, whatever. Um, but as you progress through with your points, your, your consistent streaming, uh, you gain points and you work your way up uh, all the way through. Okay. So you can see right now I have 838 points, I'm sorry, 8,338 points and I need 16,000 points to get to this level here. Okay. All right. Uh, and then under essentials, you have your alert box, widgets, tipping, all that type of stuff, okay? We will cover that in the next video. Um, but really quick, before we hop out of here, um, I wanna just do a quick mention about Ultra, okay? So Streamlabs is free to use, okay? A lot of the aspects of Streamlabs are free, okay? No credit card required. You don't have to pay for anything um, in order to use Streamlabs. And one of the great things about Streamlabs too is if you want some different overlays, for your streaming, you can download uh, free overlays through Streamlabs. There are some that do require an Ultra membership, and you'll see those, and we'll, we'll cover that when we get into the desktop uh, portion of this, okay? Um, but you can get Ultra if you want to pay for that, and you do get some extra you know, perks and stuff uh, on the Ultra side, okay? So if you have not already, go ahead and uh, download the desktop version of Streamlabs, and go ahead and install that. And once that's installed, uh, we'll go ahead and get you set up with uh, just kind of the basic setup of your scenes, your sources, and how to manage all that, okay? All right, so we're gonna go ahead and switch back over to our uh, Streamlabs desktop. Okay, so we are now back over at our Streamlabs desktop. And um, I'm going to just kind of go over the basics, uh, just kind of what each of the windows are and, you know, what they mean uh, and how to use them, okay? Uh, sometimes people see this and they're like, oh, goodness gracious, I have no idea what I'm doing here. This is too intense for me. This is too in-depth. Um, honestly, it, it takes a little bit to get used to, uh, but you will... Follow this video. I promise you, you will get into setting up your scenes. You'll get into setting up multiple scenes and it'll be, you'll have it down in no time. Okay. Uh, and I'll go over some of the little kind of weird things that I've seen uh, that happen. Uh, super easy to fix. Um, as long as you <laughs> give yourself enough time before a stream to make sure that everything is set up correctly before you do your stream and you're not running into issues as you're trying to get going. Okay. Um, so, all right, first off, um, I do just want to cover these windows at the bottom. Uh, so here you have, this is your scene window, okay? Now right here you can see it says tutorials, and over here that says sources, and then our mixer. This is our, our audio stuff over here, okay? Um, so this says tutorials, but these are our scenes, okay? Your scene is your overall, uh, think of it as a, a, a folder, okay, uh, that's going to contain um, your uh, your different windows and so on and so forth. So my scene right now, I'm, I'm under the tutorial scene. So in my scene, I have, um, three different, uh, screens here. Uh, and that is so I can easily switch between the three while I'm streaming. Okay. Uh, or even just recording. Uh, now I'm not currently recording with Streamlabs because if I go through and change, um, my scenes, it will actually cause uh, an issue with my microphone. So um, I'm using a, a separate recording software uh, to record this video so that I can go through and show you all this stuff. So uh, really quick, um, so my Samsung, this is my Samsung screen that I am on currently, okay? Uh, and then I have my Asus screen, which is what we were actually just looking at uh, for the streamlabs.com. Okay, and then I have my plan R, which I use as a third screen in the event that I need to uh, utilize that screen for something else without having to close a bunch of windows, so on and so forth. Okay, um, so what I do want to show you right now, I want to go into tutorials. I'm going to click the little drop down arrow here, and you can see I have all these scenes over here. These are my scene collections. Okay, so I, would, I do want to back up a little bit. So a scene collection this is a, my tutorials is a scene collection, okay? The scenes are within the scene collection. So the scene collection is like your 
bigger folder, okay? And then you have your scenes, which are like a subfolder, and then your sources um, are in that, you know, scene folder, okay? And you can also have folders inside your sources uh, to kind of collect things together that belong together, um, and we'll get further into that later on, okay? Um, so really quick, I'm going to go up to manage scene collections, okay? You're going to get this window that pops up, and you'll see all of your scene collections over here along the side. And you can set them, you can name them however you want so that they're easier to find when you want to, you know, set up a scene for a certain thing. So for me, um, a lot of you know that are watching, um, my subscribers, you know I do a lot of PGA Tour uh, and I play with Jeffrey Gamer. Okay. Um, and also I am a member of the Silverlining Roleplay server uh, 5M for GTA 5. So I have my scene set up for that. Okay. Uh, recently I did my Christmas stream, uh, and I've been doing some stuff with my Christmas stream because we are in the holiday season. Okay. Uh, lights out. I had set up for, uh, doing my wounded warrior project, um, warrior week, which was, uh, basically a campaign for donating to the wounded warrior project, uh, during that second week of November, uh, six days in Fallujah. So I actually kind of co-use this uh, between six days in Fallujah and uh, Call of Duty um, because they're both like a military type thing. So that's the theme that I have used for that. Uh, Fright, I did that with uh, my um, Father's Day stream, uh, my scream uh, scarecast, uh, and then my flight sim uh, I have set up. So still working on that one. We'll uh, hopefully be getting some videos out with the flight sim here soon. But anyhow, uh, we'll get back to it. So we have our scene collections over here. Okay. Uh, I want to show you guys, uh, the template library. So you have three options right here. You can import, uh, existing scenes from OBS. If you are transitioning from OBS to Streamlabs. All right. Um, you also have the option to just start off from scratch with a fresh, uh, scene collection and, you know, build in your own stuff from there. Uh, or you can start off with a template. Okay, and I'm going to show you some of the templates that uh, are provided through uh, Streamlabs, okay? So now you'll notice when I hover over a lot of these, it says install the Ultra Overlay. So that means that you have to be a Ultra member or subscriber in order to download those overlays. But don't worry, there are uh, quite a few overlays that you can download that come with the free version, okay? Um, so you have the ability to search up here if you want to search something specific like let's say call of duty oops i can't type so i'm going to type call of duty hit enter and it's going to pop up with all of the different things that are within call of duty okay um now keep in mind again some of these uh, a lot of these are saying you know install ultra to download and i actually almost want to say i wonder I've had Ultra uh, for quite a while, and I was downloading and creating my own overlays um, through Motion Array uh, and utilizing um, After Effect, uh, Adobe After Effects to create um, my overlays. So I almost want to say they actually might require you to utilize uh, or to have a Ultra membership in order to <clears throat> excuse me to download themes or overlays so i apologize for misspeaking about that everyone um i i just i've had it so it doesn't uh i could have swore i've downloaded free free overlays uh, or maybe if i type free okay so uh this is just i just have the support so yes you can download uh, free overlays. There are quite a few. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't misspeaking about that. I don't want to give anybody, uh, false information. Uh, so yeah. So, uh, if you are not a, um, subscriber with the ultra or do not plan to be, uh, just come in here into your search and you can select whichever one of these and then just type free and it'll pop up with all the free ones and you'll see down here there's six different pages um, just for the first person shooter alone, okay? Um, some of them don't really deal. That's not a first person shooter that looks more like a blue ribbon <laughs> um, type thing. Um, charity package, 
Uh, so these might just simply be all of the free ones that they have uh, over the course of the next six pages. Okay, but they have quite a few. Um, and then uh, I'll be covering in my next video and I'll have other videos specifically within After Effects on how to create overlays. Uh, there are various websites that you can download templates and just create your own overlay from the template. Uh, but I just wanted to get into, uh, cover this real quick so you can see uh, that there are different overlays. All right. Um, so what we're going to do um, just to uh, kind of cover getting set up with your scene collection and you're setting up your scenes, uh, we'll go ahead and just download and install this overlay right here. Okay. So that's going to go ahead and download. And now that is installed. Okay. So over here under uh, SIF, uh, you can see these are your scenes within your scene collection. Okay. Now, for me personally, um, I always like to organize my scenes so that they are in order of how I typically go through them. So my live screen is uh, always after my intermission screen. I have my starting screen first, okay, and then I have my intermission screen, and then my live screen, and then I have my, <clears throat> excuse me, starting to be a little under the weather, so I apologize, everybody. Please uh, forgive my, my voice changes. I, I'm feeling a little under the weather. Uh, my kiddo's been sick for the past, like, week, so. All right. So this is our be back soon. You can see uh, you also have the option uh, if you wish. You, you do not have to have these here if you don't want, but you can change these so that you can have uh, your social media listed there. And then you have, for some of these, you will have the option or the ability to do a collaboration cam. So you can have multiple people in your stream, okay? Uh, and then I'll move that down there. And then so we have our ending scene. And the same thing right here. So once you change it on one, it will change it on all. Okay, you do not have to go in to do the changes on each one. Uh, and the way you would do that is down here in your social media. We will cover that in a little bit. Uh, but first off, we're going to go back up to our starting scene. So with the starting scene, you can see uh, there is no uh, background movement. Okay, uh, it's a... Let's check here. We can open it up and see. So it is all still screens, okay? Um, so by hitting the Browse button on the starting screen, this is the background image that's provided in the in the overlay template, okay? So you have uh, the folder. This is your overlay uh, folder right here, and these are your uh, the the folder itself, uh, the subfolder that contains uh, everything specific about the scythe. Uh, overlay. Okay, so you have all of your different images um, and o of part of the overlays uh, that kind of stack on top of each other uh, to allow you to, you know, have your camera behind like a border, uh, but in front of something else, so on and so forth. I, I think you all get the gist. Okay. Now going into the browse and opening it up in here, you'll be able to see whether or not you have video files uh, like the web app files, or if they're just straight up you know, images, these are PNG files because of the transparency that PNG allows you to uh, maintain. So we'll go ahead and close that. So with this specific overlay, you're not gonna get any of the, you know, the motion stuff in the background. Um, it's just more of a place setter, okay? Uh, so really quick over here in the sources, you can see the uh, starting screen, which is this all here, and then you have your social media. So that's gonna link you back to your social media stuff right here, okay? Now, remember I said earlier, you can have subfolders under your sources, okay? So for social media one, you click on the folder and it will highlight both the text there and the, the follow and the Facebook symbol, okay? Now within that folder, you can see here it says Twitter icon. Well, that's obviously not a Twitter icon, okay? Now in this case, because this is a free overlay once again, uh, they give you a basic, you know, they used all three Facebook icons. Simple enough, go out, find a Twitter icon if you have Twitter, and you can change the icon specifically. And actually here, you, it allows you to change it. So you don't have to go find your own, okay? 
uh, Snapchat. I think I don't remember what that one is. There's Twitch and there's Twitter. So if you do have a Twitter account, simply click on that, click done, and now it's changed to the Twitter logo. Okay, and then under the username, you simply click on, double click on that, and right here where it says text, username, change that to whatever your screen name is uh, or username for your Twitter account. Okay, now you can go in, you can change the font, you can change the color of the font, you can change the size. Typically, anytime a, an overlay is already pre-made, you do not need to really modify or change anything. They have it sized pretty much appropriately. Now, if you have a long username, uh, you may need to go in and space these out uh, so that they're not overlapping each other, but super easy to do. Type in your name. You know, for me, I have mine's the Squint Gaming. It's long. Um, so it's longer than what username is. So I would have to space mine out. But again, super simple. Now to do that, instead of having to do these individually, it's easy enough to literally just click on social media folder, the social media one folder, and just use my arrow keys so that I maintain the same line. And I'm just going to keep going over and over until... I can see that my username is not overlapping this the the next one, okay? And then same thing over here for social media 3, I already know it's going to be longer than this and it's probably going to overlap the icon. So, I'll just move that over a little bit more, space it out till it looks like it's pretty close um to, you know, being evenly spaced uh and still kind of in line um somewhat centered on the page, okay? So I'm not going to get too much more into the weeds on that. Uh, you saw the basics of how I did that one. So then simply going back to the starting screen, you can see that that did change. Um, I didn't update my username here, um, but that it, it's that simple. Okay, super easy to do. Uh, next thing we're going to cover here is the alert box. Okay, so here is your alert box. Everything inside of here for your alerts is going to pop up there. Now, what do I mean by alerts? If you have any type of, um, I, I would say like a, a sound with an image or something, if somebody redeems something in your chat, uh, you know, they hit like exclamation mark, redeem, scared. Okay, you have an image that's linked to that that's also with a sound or you have a, a, a GIF or video or something that pops up. It's going to pop up in here. It's going to pop up in your alert box, okay? Uh, not going to cover too much of that right now. Uh, I will be getting more into alert box, uh, alerts, uh, cloud bot, all that stuff in the next video. And that will all link back to this. Okay. Um, I typically, I don't think I've ever seen anybody have any type of alert during their starting, uh, party starting part of their stream, excuse me. Um, so you can keep it or you can get rid of it. Or if you want to keep it, um, you know, just because it's already there, but you don't want it, anything to show on your starting screen, you can simply click right here, this little eye, you'll get the line through it, and that just means that it's not going to display, okay? It's hidden. Easy enough, right? Uh, and I will cover this over here real quick, too. So right here, you have your lock and unlock. So I'm going to click that lock button, right? Now, my alert box, I don't like it there. I want to move it. But, oh, I can't move it. I'm grabbing the back, uh, the actual picture in the background of my starting screen because the alert box is locked, okay? Now, if I go to unlock the alert box, now I can move it. Simple enough, okay? So, all right, and uh, we've pretty much covered, we already got the social media aspect. So really, there's not much uh, for the starting screen uh, scene uh, under sources that you really need, okay? Um, desktop audio, now, you do have a couple options when it comes to your, you know, the beginning of your stream. If you want to have music, um, it's it's a great thing to kind of keep your your viewers engaged, so to speak. Uh, it gives them something to listen to uh, while your stream is going. Okay. Um, so now you can add music into your sources, which will automatically play when you open up your starting when you click on your starting screen. Okay. Now, the only issue that I found with this is uh, it doesn't allow you to necessarily stop it and start it when you want to, okay? It's going to start it as soon as you click on the starting screen. Say you're 
you know, you're getting ready to go live and, you know, you've been messing around with stuff, getting things set up and uh, you hit go live and you switch over to your starting screen. As soon as you click that starting screen, your music is going to start playing. Okay. Um, now, the the way that I have gotten around that when I do my streams is one, uh, let me let me add uh, some music here just so I can kind of show you, get a better idea of what I'm talking about. So I'm going to add a source media file. You can either rename it, um, you know, whatever you want, or you can leave it media file. Uh, you do have the option to loop. So say it's only like a 30 second song, but you need it to play for two minutes or, you know, until you're ready to change your scene to your intermission screen, you can put it on loop. Okay. Uh, and it will just replay it over and over until you switch your scene. So give me one moment. Let me. Um, okay, I'm going to use this one just because it's right there. Okay, so now you guys can't hear it right now. Uh, I don't think you can. All right, well, but you can see, so the media file, it, it is playing. So if I was actually live streaming right now or recording my video, um, you would be hearing the song, okay? So I'm going to switch over to intermission, and you can see, like, I no longer have that music playing in the background. It stopped. As soon as I click starting screen again, you can see that it's starting to play that music again, all right? Now, the one thing that I've found with having a media file, a music file in here, uh, if I click on the mute button, it's going to obviously not play, but it's actually going to stop it and it kind of like resets it. So I'm going to go to my intermission screen again and I'm going to come back to my starting screen. Now with that muted, you can see it's obviously not playing. So I'm going to start. I want to start with this screen, but I don't want to have a transition to go from my intermission screen to my starting screen while I'm recording or going live, right? I want to be able to go live with this scene right here. It pops up. And then after I give it about two to three seconds of, you know, being live or being recorded, then I want my music to play, right? Simple enough. I go over here and I just unclick the microphone and it should start from the beginning and, you know, play through the song. Um, and now if you're, you should be wearing headphones when you're streaming. Uh, you don't want music playing through any of your speakers because it will also replay through your microphone, which then causes issues, right? Most of you should know that. If you don't, if you're super new to streaming and you don't know that, a little bit of advice, make sure you have headphones, okay? Make sure that all of your audio uh, is going into your headphones and that it's not being played back through your microphone and into your stream, okay? So you do have the ability to, you know, adjust the volume here. You don't want it to be too loud. I usually go down to about like 70. Uh, it's loud enough that they can hear it, but it's not annoyingly loud, um, you know, like blaring. Okay. So now the other aspect that I have uh, found that seems to work a lot better um, is I have a stream deck. Okay. I actually have a few stream decks. Um, so I have music that is, uh, I add into my stream deck and I have my starting screen up. I hit my go live. I let it do a little one, two, maybe three seconds. And then I will have one of the songs that I have on my stream deck. I will push the button to play that song. And I can also allow that or set that up so that it fades in or fades out or both. Uh, and it just kind of sounds a little bit better than just blaring. Um, and, you know, I can set my own settings and I can start it and stop it when I want to um, and, you know, allow for transitions and so on and so forth. It just, it makes it a lot more smooth when going into different scenes and stuff. Okay. Uh, when you have music in here and you switch a scene, it's going to like keep going through the transition and then it just cuts off. Okay. It, it, that just doesn't really sound super professional. Uh, the only difference would be is if you do have a song uh, or some other media in here that, you're going to not have it looped um, and you're going to just kind of let it play through until it's done. So say it's like a two minute song 
you want a two minute starting, you know, starting screen, you're going to let that two minutes go by the song ends and then you transition into your intermission screen, um, and do your thing. Okay. Uh, with, with the stream deck though, I, I like having it because I do like having some of the music, uh, during the transition and kind of an intro before I give my greeting and say hi to my viewers, um, in my intermission screen. So I can let a song play, go through. Once it stops, I'll start another song and do maybe like 30 seconds of it while I'm transitioning into my next scene, okay? Um, so that is the basics of the starting, okay? Uh, and it ba it's basically all the same thing through the rest of your scenes. Um, we're gonna go to the intermission screen. And again here, so you have your main background, this is your main window, okay? This would be where your face would be, your webcam would be. Um, you have, this actually might be set up to be a webcam up here. This looks like it might be gameplay that they're recording in the back, but you can set this up however you want it, okay? It's not one set thing. Um, so I have my intermission screen. I have my my big old ugly mug here in, in the big screen. Um, up in the corner, if they if there's a window like this, uh, in a preset overlay, uh, depending on what I'm doing, I, I might put something else up there. Uh, one of my, my Christmas stream, I have my logo with uh, snow going over it. I made a GIF uh, doing that uh, just for a little visual effect. Uh, and then I have my live chat. So whatever, if you're streaming in YouTube and you have your chat linked up, you have your chat box, uh, which you can see right here, uh, your chat box will, your chat will pop up here. Okay, so you can see it there and, you know, have it on your YouTube as well. All right, uh, your background. So you have your background. The background is this right here, your intermission screen. Now you can see it's in a folder. So you it the folder itself is actually combining the text and the background image. Okay. Uh, and then here it says game, game play frame. So that is this here. Okay, now that includes... Uh, the game capture, which is set behind the main scene, uh, and then you have the game plate frame. So it's cropping out pretty much everything out here, right? Um, I don't, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't use the gameplay on the intermission screen. I do that for my live screen. Okay, uh, so yeah, this up here shows the face cam. Uh, now, if you like how this is set up, but you don't want it here on your intermission and you want it on your live, you can copy and paste it onto your live screen into your sources, okay? Super easy. Uh, same way you would do it with a lot of other things, uh, control C, control V, copy and paste, right? Um, and again, your uh, social media stuff will show up down here if you want it to. If not, you can delete it out simply by just hitting the little trash can right there and that will remove it from here. Now, it will only remove it from this specific scene, okay? So don't think that if I delete this here, it's going to delete out from everything. It will stay everywhere else. It will only delete out of the sources for this specific scene, okay? So pretty self-explanatory there. Um, if you want to do like what I do and, you know, adding in a logo and changing this to not being your, your webcam and you want this to be your webcam, so let's do that. We're gonna, I'm just going to show you the, the webcam itself, okay? Um, so I'm going to... Actually, just leave that alone. I'm going to add a source, okay? So for your webcam, you want a video capture device, okay? Super easy. Makes sense, right? Click add. Now, you have an existing source that says webcam, okay? Mine, I could probably just say add the source, and then I can actually go in and add the source specifically. Or if I want to specifically add a source... I can change that to whatever I want to change it to, webcam, face cam, or I can type in like Nexigo because that is the webcam that I have. So I can add the source. And then right here it shows Nexigo uh, webcam, okay? Now, I have the little window flap on it, so that's why you can't see anything. Um, but I'll go ahead and flip that up so you can see that it actually does work. So there we go. So now it's linking this face cam right here, okay? going to select that and close. Now my video capture device is right there. Okay, so I'm going to, whoops, 
Now you can also, if you make a mistake and you're like, you hold something and you move it by accident and you want it to go back, don't make any other movements. Just hit control Z and it will reset it. Okay. Uh, just like again with uh, other things, if you mess something up, you control Z and it undoes it. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to click on my video capture device here. And I'm actually not sure why it's not showing. It's on the top. I'm going to move that to the bottom. It doesn't want to move. Okay, it does move there. There we go. Okay. So gameplay frame, I'm going to, oh, not gameplay, I want face cam. So I'm going to delete that webcam right there. Okay. Video capture device. Podcast. And I'll click back on here. So I'm actually not sure why it's not. Wanting to select my webcam. That's really weird. It's probably because of that. It's super weird. I apologize, everybody. I don't know why that is not uh, properly selecting. And try deleting it and reopening that and see if it works that way. There we go. Because oh, yeah, it's labeled as webcam. That's why. So it is an existing source. Okay, here we go. So now we have just the webcam. So I'm going to set this up here because this is where I want my face to be during my intermission screen. Okay. So I'm going to open that up there. And just kind of center it in the middle. Now, some of these with the templates, the, the border, the overlay um, itself uh, for that gameplay. So gameplay frame. Let's see if I can adjust that. Oh, I can. Okay. So, yeah, some of these you can. Some of them you can't. It, it kind of just depends on how they have it set up. Um and I'm going to delete the gameplay capture because I I don't want it to capture the, the gameplay on this one. So now one thing that I do need, the gameplay frame, I actually need that to go on top of my webcam, uh, on top of the video, simply because otherwise it is going to be underneath the video and it's not going to look right. Okay, so now you can see I've set that up, I've fixed that. So the frame is covering the edges of my webcam video. Now. What I could do is I can go in here and I can right click and I can rename that to webcam frame. Okay, so now that's labeled webcam frame and I can go over here and I can click on this little button right here, the little folder. Okay, it's gonna give me, it's gonna say new folder. So I'm gonna say webcam and I will click done. And there's my new folder, so I'm going to grab my webcam frame. And you can see how the little blue bar at the bottom, right, how it moves over slightly. So if it's right there, that means it's just going to be below it. If I have that little indent there, it's going to put it inside the folder, just like that, okay? So I'm going to do the same thing with the webcam. And again, I need to keep that underneath the webcam frame so that it maintains this right here around the window, okay? So now I can close that. And again, we can go ahead and lock this so that I don't accidentally move the, the webcam, okay? Now you can see I clicked right here and there is the alert box, okay? So now in this portion here with the intermission, I do wanna have an alert box, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and move that over and I can set that right there. I don't necessarily mind if it covers a little bit of my face when it pops up. It's typically not gonna be big enough to where it's gonna cover this entire area. But you can also adjust the size, just like that, okay? If you want it to be a little bit smaller, you want it to be big, however you want it, that's your preference. You can set that up how you want to, okay? Uh, chat box, 
not really anything you need to do with it. You can leave it there. It, it'll it link into your uh, YouTube stuff or your Twitch, uh, however you have it set up. Uh, and a lot of that, too, will be set up through your Streamlabs online, okay? All right, so now we're going to move over to the live screen. So here in the live screen, you can see I have the web camera here again. Uh, up top, you have uh, your donations, uh, recent follower, uh, and then you have two other spaces. You can set those for whatever you want, and I will show you um, the different... Uh, you know, things that you can do there. There's a ton. There's like your top donator for the month, your top donator for the week, your top donator for the day. Uh, th those get in pretty heavy into people that are super streamers. They have, you know, thousands of followers, uh, subscribers, excuse me. Um, and so they have, you know, they like to show somebody that has been their top donator for the month. Okay. Cause they get a lot of donations, a lot of tips. Uh, typically for me, I use, uh, my most recent subscriber and somebody that has donated. Okay. Um, so that they are recognized for, you know, being a new subscriber, they're recognized for giving that donation. It gives their name and the amount. Um, and again, I'll show you how you can set that up super easy. But now while we're in the live screen, um, so we have face cam, bar overlay, alert box, and info labels. Okay. My live screen I want to have a game capture, right? Because that's what I'm going to be doing is my game capture. So simply, I'm going to open up my sources. And now some people don't use the game capture specifically, and you don't have to. You can use a display capture. You can use a window capture, screen capture. Um, it all depends on what you want. Now, keep in mind, with the game capture, uh, depending on how you have your games and stuff set up. Uh, nothing else that, so say I have my game up right now, say I'm playing PGA Tour, right? And I'm using game capture. You'll be able to see my cursor, but if I have another window that pops up, you will not see that window on the stream, okay? It's only going to capture the game itself. It's not going to capture everything that's on the screen. So I could have 30 different windows up randomly around my screen but all my streamers are going to see all people that are on my stream uh are only going to see the game screen itself and my cursor okay now with display capture or screen capture it's going to collectively pick up everything that is on my screen okay whether it's you know minimized or whatnot it's it's going to pick up everything that is on that specific screen window capture is great for certain things. Say you do have multiple windows on a screen. I have a very large screen here. Okay. Um, I have a, a, uh, it's a 32 inch, uh, screen. And so it, it's a very large screen and it's also a 4k high def screen. So for me, a lot of the stuff on here is a lot smaller. So now say I want to have maybe two separate windows up on this screen, but I only want to capture one of those windows. I can click window capture, okay? And it I can choose specifically, it'll tell me every window that is open and I can select the specific window that I want to have captured. So say um, I want to have my uh, Streamlabs on one window and I'm going to have um, my, my game on another window. Okay, because I'm going to have them side by side because I have such a big screen. I'm going to split it right down the center. My window capture, I want to capture the game, but I don't want it to capture my Streamlabs. I can select the window capture, add it into my source, and I can select in the window capture specifically the window that has my game or the window that has, you know, a website that I'm trying to show or, or discuss uh, while still having other windows open but not being captured on the stream. Okay, so I hope that makes sense to everybody. I know I'm kind of running through this a little fast. Um, I just want to cover some of the, the basic stuff to get your scenes, uh, your scene collections and everything going so that you can get online, do a stream, and, you know, start putting your, your brand and stuff out there. All right. Um, you can also add other images and so on, media files, so on and so forth, all into, you know, whichever scene you want. Um, I said logos, uh, you know, GIFs, what have you. You can do all that stuff, and it's all right here. Between your essential sources and your general sources, 
these are really all you are going to need uh, until you kind of get a little bit more in depth and learning more about, um, you know, utilizing stuff like your widgets and, you know, apps and stuff like that. Okay. Um, that will be a, a later, later video. We'll cover a majority of this stuff here in the next video. Um, and I will touch on the apps uh, in the next video as well. All right. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and move on. We'll close that out. I'm not gonna add the other source right now. Actually, I can add the game capture. Uh, the game capture is typically what I use uh, in, mine, in my streams. So I'm just gonna type game capture. So here's your game capture. You're gonna see it's just this screen. Now, when your game is open, this will go away, okay? Your, your game will, will display right here. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, it, this is not gonna be you know, trying to figure out, oh crap, now I have to find my game and put, no, this will automatically change to your game capture, okay, or to your game uh, when it is opened up. Now, because uh, that is up at the top, okay, you know, order down, top down, anything that's on top is going to be on top of everything else, right? So I want to take the game capture and I just want to drag it to the very bottom. Oh, it's going to be awkward and make me do it one by one. Okay, but you can see as I did that uh, below each thing, everything started to pop up, populate, okay? So the game capture is now behind. So my video, my webcam and all that, all this is going to display on top of the game, which is what we want, right? Now with the face cam, I'm gonna, uh, it, there, you can see there are, all three of these are in folders. So that just makes it a lot easier to move because you can click on the folder, it highlights everything within that folder, and then I can just simply click, drag, and move it over. I like having my stuff kind of over, tucked over in the corner, okay? Out of the way, people don't want to see my face blocking a majority of the stuff within the game, all right? Um, now, I have a lot of different things here and they're, they're redundant. I have those four there, I have these four there, and then I have these two down here, okay? Um, I, don't, I don't need all those, right? I can simply just go over here into my bar overlay. So let's say I don't want my bar up top, okay? I'm just going to hide it. Maybe later on at some point, I'm, I like having it there and I might switch that out instead of having something down here, okay? Uh, for the face cam, I let's say I just don't want the stream labels. I can just click on the stream labels right there and I can hide those. So I still have the little bar underneath and I can change that out with my username or my logo. Uh, and then face cam is my face cam and also the uh, border around it. So my face cam, the, the, the webcam itself, uh, video is behind the frame, right? And then we have down here, we have, <clears throat> excuse me, we have the info labels. So I can either turn off specific ones if I don't want all four of them. Maybe I only want the two of them, or maybe I don't want any of those at all. So I'm just gonna click on the folder itself and I'm gonna hide it. And they are not there. But we're gonna go back into the face cam and I'm gonna unhide these and we're gonna keep those right there. And that's typically how I do it. I like having those right below my name, okay? Um, for me, that's a simple setup. It's clean uh, and it works, it's functional, right? Okay. Um, and same thing with your alert box. Okay, we have the alert box again. Kind of hard to see uh, the outline of the, the box with the bright background, uh, but it is right here. You can kind of see the border of it right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this, and you know, I could probably put it like right in the center of the screen, or as as much as I feel that it's in the center, It sometimes it'll click like snap uh, when it's in the center, uh, or when it's uh, locking, you know, vertically or horizontally. And sometimes it doesn't. Um, but you just kind of get a feel for what the, you know, this looks like it's pretty much about the center. Okay. Now you do have like these lines here. So you can see this is pretty much centered on the screen, right? Based off of like this box here. So, but you can see like the distance between that line and that line and the distance between that line and that line, like this is less over here than this side, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and grab it and I can slightly move it over until, okay, but it, it is actually clicking to center of the screen. So for me, I'm fine with that. I'll keep it right there. Uh, high and low, it, it looks like it's spaced evenly, maybe a little bit less up top and a little bit more on the bottom. But again, 
it, it, you can set it up how you want it. Do what you want. If you want to make it smaller, you want to make it bigger, you do you. Okay. Um, but again, we'll get into uh, how to get stuff into the alert box uh, and to populate, testing it out, all that kind of stuff in the next video. All right. Okay. Moving on. Uh, the be back soon screen. Self-explanatory. Uh, really, all you need to do here, change your uh, social media stuff if you want it, or you can take it out if you just want to have your be back soon. Okay. You can add other things in here if you want to add your logo. If you want to uh, add music, you can add music to it. Um, you can do whatever you want. You know, go through your sources and you know, play around with it. That that's the best way to learn. Honestly, is just play around with stuff. Um, create a test. Uh, you know, don't don't mess around with something on a scene that you want to use because then if you end up messing it up, you're probably going to have to clear everything out and redo it. You don't want to waste all the time. This takes a lot of time to do. Okay, setting up uh, just a scene collection for one game, depending on how much stuff you want to put in it, can take a lot of time. Okay, I enjoy doing this, but it does use up a lot of time. Um, so make sure that you're testing out stuff that you want to do on a, you know, just create a test scene collection, go in there and, you know, mess around with it till your heart's content and you've, you know, figured stuff out and then just go back and just do it in your, in your main scene. Okay. Or, or copy it over. If you like the way that it looks, you like what it's doing, copy it over into your source for what you're actually going to be using to stream. Okay. Um, uh, next, uh, we'll move on to the ending scene again, same thing with the, the back soon screen, you can add whatever you want. If you want to add, you know, uh, additional text, you can do that. Uh, simply just go up into here and you can click on, there it is right there, text. Okay. Um, now some people, and I'll cover this more in the next uh, video as well. Some people want something like a scroller. Okay. Uh, you see people with streams and they have the scrollers at the bottom or they have a little scroller at the top of their webcam, uh, you know, with, information, names, what have you. All right. Uh, I will cover that in a, in the next video, but it is easy to do, super easy to do. And it does add a nice, you know, little, uh, kind of spice to your, to your stream. Okay. For your viewers. A lot of people will do the scrollers for like their members. Uh, when you get to the status where you can have members, um, you can set it up to where you have new subscribers. You can set it up to, you know, your donators, people that have donated to you and you want to recognize them by adding them their name and their donation amount to the scroller. Um, you can have a banner or a, a scroller for, you know, say you did a giveaway and somebody won the giveaway. So, you know, maybe they popped out of the chat for a minute and they didn't realize that they won. You can put, you know, winner, 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 giveaway, this, whatever you want to do in the scroller, you can do it. Okay. Um, there are obviously some limitations, but with as far as text is concerned, you can add text into a scroller and have it scroll across your screen. You can have it repeat. You can have it do it every so often. Uh, you slow, fast. You can move it around. You can put it up top. Again, you can do it over your webcam. Uh, just a nice thing to add into your stream. Okay. Let's see. Um, oh, the one thing that I did forget to mention. So for your intermission and your live screen. Uh, one thing you probably don't see in here is a microphone. So if you do not have a microphone, uh, or audio capture device in your scene, nobody will be able to hear you. Okay. Uh, now, even without me being live or recording through Streamlabs, you can see over here, there's no audio being picked up. Okay. Um, and that is because I do not have a audio capture device in the scene. So easy enough, I just go into my sources and I'm gonna go to audio input capture, add audio source so I can just leave it there or I can type uh, what I what my microphone is. I have a Wave XLR. So then I know, hey, it's my Wave XLR. And you can set up multiple microphones. Uh, if you have a microphone on your headset, you can use the microphone on your headset. My webcam has a microphone in it as well. Uh, and I do also have a Blue Yeti that I used to use um, for the microphone. Now, um, with this, I need to, uh, properly select the device. Okay. I have a lot of different things that come up in my microphone. I use the wave XLR, uh, and I have, 
um, like my Wavelink um, for setting up like my devices, my audio devices and stuff outside of Streamlabs, uh, voice mod, uh, I have my microphone for my gaming headset. Um, so, but I'm going to be using the Wavelink microphone effects. So there we go. Now you can see right down here in the bottom where it says Wave XLR, it's picking up my voice, okay? So now I have an audio device. So when I am streaming or recording, people will actually be able to hear my voice, right? Okay, now one other thing I do wanna cover really quick. So if you are like me, and um, I'm gonna see if this works with me just recording, it should. Uh, so I am going to play a song and I wanna see, it should populate. Now, for, we're gonna go up to, really quick, with this, this is all part of it, we're gonna go up to the desktop audio. So I want you to notice, so desktop audio, for most computers, it should just be the default, okay? It's going to play through the default. And I'm gonna put my headphones on real quick so that I can see if I can hear it because I have my audio going through this even though they're not on. Now, with that, uh, my output device is default. And the desktop audio is going to go through the output device, okay? right here where it says audio monitoring. In the event that you have any type of media, audio, video, you know, with sound, um, and you wanna make sure that you can hear it so that, hey, I need to know it's coming towards the end of this so that I can get ready to do the next thing. You can see on your screen, you can see the, the noise by the level, okay? Um, but you're not quite sure, like, hey, I don't know when it's going to stop, and then automatically it stops, you're paying attention to something else, and it's like, oh, crap, I don't have music going right now, it's been off for who knows how long. Okay, well, you can monitor it here, and just keep an eye on it, and then you see once it starts to kind of taper down, all right, it's getting to the end, all right, it's done, now I can move on to the next thing. So watch, I'm going to see if this works. Okay, so... Um, it's not playing through my headset, and it's probably because of my settings. Uh, my computer, yeah, I have it set to the speaker. Yeah, my speaker volume is down. Okay, and because it's in the middle of it, it's not going to switch over to my headset. And I just changed it uh, to my headset, so now it stopped, uh, even though it's still playing. So let me see if I do that. Okay, also, uh, it's not going to show, because I did switch it to my headset, which is set for the default. Um, I'm going to go to monitor and output. So now the monitor and output, it's going to allow me to hear it, monitoring it, right? I can hear it so that I can monitor that it's playing. And then it's also going to go to the output, which is for like you, if you're watching the stream. Okay. So let's try it again. You are now in the presence of a... Well, that's one thing that I really love about having the stream deck is it makes streaming with Streamlabs or any platform, it makes it a lot uh, easier and it's a lot smoother of a transition to go, you know, between everything, okay? Um, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take these off for right now. Okay, just gonna disconnect this so they don't overcharge. Okay, uh, I will figure out my audio issue later. Uh, I'm not sure why that's doing that. Pardon me, throat's getting a little dry. Over here, yapping away. Okay, um, so moving on. So I, I think I covered this enough. It's pretty self-explanatory. If you don't want to hear it, you can simply just go to monitor off. That will still allow the music to play through the desktop audio. Uh, just won't go through your audio device, whether it's a speaker or a headset. And again, you would want it to be on a headset so that it's not playing through your microphone, okay? All right, we'll close out of there.
And now you can also say, like I showed you earlier, you can add the music into here um, and it will play through your desktop as long as you don't have it. Um, or as I say, it'll play through your speakers or through your headset um, if you have it set to monitor and output. Uh, just make sure if you do have it set to monitor and output, again, it's not set for speakers, it's set for like a headset um, so that it's not playing and replaying through your microphone. Okay, another thing too that I will cover just to get it out, um, when you're streaming, it is always a really good idea to have your stream up in a window so that you can watch it, whether it's YouTube or Twitch uh, or Facebook, whatever you're streaming on. You always want to have a, another window up that has your live stream going, okay? You will notice a delay, probably about two to three seconds, um, but you do want to have that up so that you can make sure that everything is working. However, when you are watching your own stream while you are going, while you are live, you need to make sure that you have the mute button on the stream clicked, okay? Because otherwise you will hear yourself uh, and it gets really annoying and it's like an echo. Um, so make sure that you have that muted. Also, if you're streaming with other people uh, and you have their stream open, make sure that you don't have the audio on on theirs, uh, especially if you're in like a Discord. Um, I do VC uh, in a Discord with Jeffrey Gamer and some other people as well uh, that I can hear them through Discord and then the Discord can be heard through the stream. So then I'm hearing it again through the stream, through my headset, if I have it unmuted, okay? So make sure that anytime you have a live stream going while you're streaming, you make sure that it's muted, okay? All right, and then the collab cam, I'm not gonna get into the collab cam right now. Uh, I wanna keep this basic, um, but if you are kind of intermediary in streaming and you've used other stream platforms and you've done like multiple cameras, multiple you know streamers at the same time on Streamlabs, uh, then you can go ahead and mess around with that. This will be for a later video. Uh, we're hoping to actually be able to get this set up uh, with Jeffrey Gamer and Hashtag Hell for them to get their Meet the Gamers up and running again. Uh, they're trying to find a platform that they could use. A couple of the ones that they were using weren't working very well. And uh, another one that they're looking into just didn't provide what they needed it to. Okay, so we'll leave the collab cam stuff for a different video, uh, but it is an option uh, for you to use if you do eventually want to get into having multiple people, you know, a, a podcast or a, a video cast, um, what have you. Okay, um, so as far as that is concerned, that should be pretty much everything about, you know, the basics of getting your stream set up. Now, really quick, I do want to cover, uh, if you look up over here on the side, you have uh, a few different um, like subfolders, okay? So you have your editor, your overlays, your app store, uh, and you know all these different things within your desktop portion of the Streamlabs, and then you have your stuff down here, okay? Uh, this allows you to basically do the exact same thing that you can do online. Uh, I find that online is a lot easier to deal with some of the stuff like the cloud bot, the alert box, and all that kind of stuff. So I do that online, but it all links in, it all ties in together, okay? Doing something online will affect what you do on your desktop or how, you, how your Streamlabs desktop reacts and all that kind of stuff while you're streaming, okay? Um, now you have your editor, your layout editor, uh, so you can set these up how you want if you wanna adjust your different things you can choose over here how you want everything laid out um, that's totally up to you uh, and you also have uh, what is called studio mode okay so you have your studio mode uh, so you have your editor over here and then this is what your people are actually seeing when you're live okay um, now one other thing I need to discuss. Uh, so pretty much, I, I just use the editor, okay? Uh, it's simple enough for me. I see what's going on. If I need to change something, I can change it. But majority of the time, um, the only reason I'm changing something is because I was kind of getting into my stream super late. 
and something, you know, a window had shrunk or something. Um, the, the source itself was smaller than it was supposed to be because something happened and I can just go in and adjust it real quick right here. Okay. Uh, but the other thing that I do want to discuss really quick is transitions. Okay. The Streamlabs itself has a general um, basic transition. Okay. Uh, called the Stinger Transitions. Now you can go in and you can edit and you can see kind of the different types of transitions. Okay, so you have the, the stinger, you have the cut, the fade, um, swipe, slide, and you can test all these. Okay, you can see uh, the motion, so on and so forth. Um, and sometimes, you know, if you have a video file, you can add in a video file. Your video file is typically going to be like a WebM if you've created your own transition. Uh, and then you can rename it if you have, you know, whatever transition you want to name it, uh, whatever your name was for it, okay? Um, if you have sound attached to it, you know, it's going to be within your video file. Uh, so you can adjust the volume of, you know, whatever that sound is. So as it, maybe it's closing, it's giving like a swishing sound, okay? You can adjust the volume for that, all right? Uh, you can adjust your transition point. That's, you typically don't really need to mess with that. Uh, it, once you put in your, your transition, if you're adding a file, it will automatically fit. And anytime you go from scene to scene, you, you can link the transitions, uh, so that they occur. Uh, maybe you have a couple different transitions and you want one specific to go between your starting screen and your intermission. And then you have another one that you want to use between your intermission and your live. Okay. You can set those up, uh, however you want. Um, or you can just leave it with the, the, global or the set transition and it will transition the same for each time you switch scenes okay so right here with the global transition you've kind of already seen it as i've switched all right uh, so you can edit that one that's a basic one or you can add an, an additional okay so new transition you can name it what do you want it to be i want it to be a stinger this is going to pop up okay so that allows you to do your video file and all your settings and stuff in here so we'll leave it at the global. Now the connections, this is what I was talking about. So say I want to have one uh, transition. I want to do my global transition between my starting and my intermission screen. But because I have a different transition that I want to use between my intermission and my live, I'm going to set that up that way. And I'm going to go back into here and hit edit. And I'm going to switch that to my new transition. Yes, I haven't set one, but just to show you, you know, for all intents and purposes, all right, so that allows me to have uh, connections between one scene to another with a specific transition, okay? If you just want the basic transition to be used the same through all of them, you don't need to have any connections. Leave your transition, your global transition there, and you're all set, okay? So transition, transition. Why did that not... Oh, okay, I probably reset it um, when I did that. I probably, I probably messed up the link on that. I apologize for that. Um, okay, so basically what we're going to do, let me open up this here. This should be, this. so this will, if you mess something up, like within the overlay, the best place to start to look for something that might be off or, you know, if a file is missing is to open up kind of where all of that overlay, the folder that that overlay is set up in. So the easiest way to do that is just to click on, like here I did the starting screen, I double clicked on it, and it shows me the pathway for where this scene collection and, and this overlay is at. Um, so I'm gonna go into that file, and let's see, maybe in here, okay, so those are the social media, those are the icons. So I believe background. Those are all PNGs. Okay, let's just go and see all files. Okay. So this right here, I so that's in all formats. 
I went to all files, so that's probably what we are looking for. So I'm gonna just uh, click up in here. I'm gonna hit Control C and copy that uh, file or that uh, pathway. I'll hit cancel here, cancel there. Let me go back up into my transitions, and we're going to click here in video file. And I'm gonna just cop, uh, click up here again into the bar, and I'm gonna hit Control V and enter, and that will bring me to right here. There's the WebM file. I'm gonna click open, and we're gonna test that, and that should fix it. There we go, so that's fixed. So that's all it was. Uh, it just, when I messed with the transition, it closed that out. Okay, um, so that is going to be it for this video, okay? I, ho I hope the basics that you guys kind of understand this um, as far as getting your scene set up, getting your scene collection, uh, getting your sources, um, and just kind of going through and seeing all the different aspects of how everything kind of intertwines and works together, okay? Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to put them down in the comments. If you if there's a specific video that you want to see um, because, you, you know, you have a, a question that relates to something that I didn't cover, you felt I should have covered, uh, please post it down in the, in the comments below and uh, I'll make sure to look at those and uh, I'll come up with a, a video that is kind of more tailored to what you're looking for, okay? Um, be sure to check out the uh, the next video uh, once I get that uh, uploaded. Uh, that will probably be answering a lot of the questions that people have when it comes to more of the specific stuff, like adding in the uh, the different widgets, the, the alert box, uh, the alerts, um, and you know, the, the, all the chat stuff with the, the timers and the commands and so on and so forth. Okay. I'm going to cover all that in the next video. So be sure to watch out for that. Uh, that should be coming out, um, today or tomorrow. Um, and, uh, yeah, please follow the video. Uh, again, if you have any questions or comments, put them down below in the comments and I will make sure to react to those. So until next time, everybody, I hope this video helped you. Make sure you hit that like button so it uh, gets further out, reaches further people that need help with learning how to use Streamlabs. Also, if you're not already subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button and also hit that notification bell so you can be alerted to when I upload new videos and when I go live. Until next time, everybody, I appreciate you coming and checking out the Squint Gaming channel. And this has been another Squintorials video. Until next time, everybody, peace and love. The Squint Gaming is out.